20 Da Vinci Resolve tips you should know in no particular order. If you're working with fusion compositions, you don't have to bring them into the media bin and then rename them from there. All you have to do is select the clip and then go to file and here you can change the name in the name box. And then you can also change the color if you wish to do so. You can change your track color so that you can easily identify things. Just right click on the track that you want to change and then select your color. You can use these so that all your stock footage tracks have the same color, your talking head another color and so on. That way when you need to change something, you already know where things are. The same also applies for the soundtracks. Talking about colors, you can right click on any clip to change the color in your timeline. But if you have multiple cuts of the same clip across your timeline, you can go to your media bin and then change the color of your clip from there. And that way, all the cuts from that same clip will be easier to find. You can also rename your tracks to keep things organized. Make the tracks taller holding shift and then scrolling your mouse wheel or by simply dragging them from right here. The track name will show up as video one by default or video two. Now click on it and then change it to whatever you want. If you use a fusion effect on a clip, you're not limited to the controls in the inspector. You can activate the fusion overlay control and then change things directly on your viewer. Quick note, not all effects are gonna show up here. So for some, you will still have to go into fusion and also the same applies for open effects. Since I showed you the Fusion Overlay Viewer, let me just mention that you can also change the transform controls, the crop controls, and the dynamic zoom from the viewer using these elements. And if you have Studio, you also have the option to adjust the smart reframe from the viewer as well. If your timeline tends to get messy, you can clean it up by going to Timeline and then clean up video tracks. Here you can get rid of the clips that you are not using and if you don't want to delete them, you can disable them and also change the color from all the clips that you are not using. Use the dynamic trim mode to move all your clips at the same time. Simply press T and now selecting the front part of a clip, you can drag everything forward. This works great if you want to add something in between clips later on. Just make one of the clips longer, then cut the extra space and put the new clip in between. Copying and pasting video attributes. If this is the first time that you see this, it will be a game changer. All you need to do is copy a clip by pressing Ctrl or Command C, and then selecting the next clip or the clips, press Alt V, and here you can select the attributes that you want the other clip or all the other clips to have, and then press OK, and all those attributes will carry over to the next clips. Go up here if you want to reset a video's values. Resetting the video values will reset everything you see in the video tab. And then as the label says, you can use this one to remove all the effects that you added to a clip. These are the fusion effects and also the open effects. The next one is for audio effects. And then if you want to completely reset everything, just remove and reset all. You can remove green screens from a clip or an element without going into the color page or into Fusion. All you have to do is find a 3D keyer in the Open Effects tab. Now make sure the Open Effects overlay is active. And now you can use the picker to select the green area. After that, adjust the despill value and then you are set. Have an object follow a custom path by right clicking on the transform node center. Now click on path. Now go to the modifiers. Get rid of the displacement keyframe for now. Now make sure your transform node is selected and then press shift C or click append to draw the path. After the path is done, you can use the displacement value to move the object along the path. And you can also use keyframes to create animations. You can create some interesting animations inside Fusion by stacking transform nodes. For example, I'm going to animate the rotation here twice with the anim curves. Now, by moving the pivot point and position of the second transform node, I can create an animation that has two rotations at the same time. If you're not familiar with keyframes yet, you can use the anim curves to create dynamic animations. After you right click on a value and select the anim curves, you can go to the modifiers to adjust the different parameters. The scale is related to the value of the element that you just created the anim curves on. The animation will take place from the first keyframe to the last one. 
unless you change the time scale. For example, if you set it to 2, it will be double the speed and it will be completed at the half point mark. Also, inside the Anim Curves modifier, you can use some of the pre-made curve templates to make your animations more interesting. Inside Fusion, you can press Ctrl P with a node selected to disable it without having to disconnect this from your node tree. If you're on the Ventresoft Studio and you have more than one monitor, go to Workspace and then Video Clean Feed and then select the monitor you want to use to show your viewer in full screen. In my case, this works great if I'm working with vertical videos because of the orientation of my second monitor. If you drag a polygon inside Fusion, there are three shapes that you can create without adding the points yourself. A circle, a rectangle slash square, and an arrow. To do this, right click on your viewer with the node selected, go to the option that says polyline, then down to create, and here you have the three options to select from. If you want to bring 2D elements into the 3D space without using the 3D space, there is one alternative that you can use. The difference is small, but there is one if you pay attention. The alternative is called DVE. And you can also add the DVE as an effect in the edit page. Also, you have the option to use my free tool, which is called 3D Rise, which acts as if you were adding it to a 3D plane. If you want to add rounded borders to a clip without going into Fusion, you can add a color bordered effect and then adjust the roundness from here. Set the border to zero if you don't want any other colors at all. And then you can also mix this with the 3D rise effect to create a cool floating screen that you can animate. If you drag a lot of elements into Fusion, particularly images, you're probably tired of having to loop these or adjust the global in and out of them every single time. To solve this once and for all, you can set up a new default for your media in node. All you have to do is select a random media in node from your composition and then make sure that the loop option is checked. Then right click on the node, go to settings and then save default. Now when you add another media in element, the loop option will be checked by default and you can press play and the element won't disappear after the first keyframe. And those are the 20 DaVinci Resolve tips you should know. If you knew all of them, then you can comment this icon right here. If you didn't know all of them, then this video is a success because you learned something new. Now make sure to check out the paperful effects if you're interested in creating collage animations in seconds and also find freebies and assets for DaVinci Solve at Swapy.com. That is it for this video. 